Hey guys, welcome back to the Kubernetes series. If you are following this series, I am sure that you have come across different controllers for managing pods like replica sets, deployments, stateful sets and daemon sets. These all controllers ensure that their pods are always running. If a pod fails, the controller restarts it or reschedules it to another node to make sure the desired number of pods are always running. But what if you want to run our pods only once like taking the DB backup or sending emails in a batch? Such processes should not be running continuously. They will run just for a certain amount of time and they run at particular times, not continuously. For these processes, having controllers like deployment is a bad idea as it makes sure the pod runs continuously. In this chapter, we will learn how to run bad jobs like this only once or schedule them at particular intervals using jobs and cron jobs with complete hands-on. So without any further delay, let's get started. When a Kubernetes job is created, it creates the pods with the image given in the manifest. This image can be any application that holds the logic of our use case. If there are errors in running the application in the pod because of any reasons like memory, CPU issue, etc., the job retries for a given number of times by recreating the pods. The number of retries can be given with back off limit. For example, if we set back off limit to 3 and the pod fails, Kubernetes will create a new pod to retry the task. If the new pod also fails, Kubernetes will create another pod and so on until 3 attempts have been made. If the job still fails after 3 attempts, Kubernetes will mark the job as failed with the back off limit exceeded error. The back off limit field is very useful to ensure that our job is not retried forever which can waste resources and cause unnecessary load on the system. If we don't set anything, the back off limit defaults to 6. Please note another property in the job manifest that is active deadline seconds. With this, we define maximum how long a job should run. If the job runs more than this period, the job will be marked as incomplete with a deadline exceeded error no matter how many pods are created. Note that active deadline seconds takes precedence over back off limit. And if there are no errors in the pod, the job controller checks the number of pod completions. This we can give in the job manifest. With this, we are asking the job to run our pod at least these many number of times. So, this completions in the job is kind of similar to the replicas in the deployment. The job tries to spin up new pods until the required completions are met. When a specified number of successful completions is reached, the job will be marked as completed. When we give completions as greater than 1, by default pods are created one by one sequentially. But we can create the pods parallelly by setting the parallelism. For example, if the parallelism is set to 2 and completions to 3, two pods will be created for the first time. Once they are completed, another one pod will be created. This is the life cycle of a job. These jobs are executed only once. That means when a job is created, the pod is created and the execution runs in the pod and that pod will be completed. But sometimes we want to run a job on a scheduled basis like DB backups where we want to take the backup of our database every day at midnight. For that, Kubernetes provides another resource called cron job. In the cron job, we can give the cron expression. When cron job is created, Kubernetes creates the jobs on a scheduled basis as per given cron expression. And from there, the same job flow goes on. In short, Kubernetes jobs and cron jobs are useful for automating and managing a wide variety of tasks in a containerized environment. Jobs and cron jobs can be used in multiple use cases like taking the database backups as we discussed just now. This ensures that our database is always backed up and can be restored later when needed. These also can be used in log rotation to ensure that our log files do not grow too large and we have access to historical log data when we need it. And we can also use in data processing like parsing logs, extracting data and transforming data. This can be useful for tasks that need to be performed on an ad hoc basis or a schedule. 
Not only for these, we can use for many more use cases. Enough of theory. Let's look at one of these use cases in action. We have already seen how to run MongoDB using stateful sets in Kubernetes. Now let us see how we can take the backup of this MongoDB using job and then schedule it with cron job. This is the Mongo stateful set that we deployed in the stateful sets chapter of this series. First, let us write a Kubernetes job that takes the backup of this MongoDB. Let's go to the VS code and create the job manifest, job.yaml. I'm just pasting the job manifest in the interest of time. However, let's go through all the properties of this manifest. So as you already know, this is the API version and the kind, and this is the name of the job that we are creating. And this is the back off limit, which we are setting to five. That means if the pod fails, the job retries it for five number of times. This is the active deadline seconds, which we are setting to 100 seconds. That means if the job runs for more than 100 seconds, the job will be marked as error. So this is TTL seconds after finished, which we are setting to 60 seconds. When we set this, after job is completed, the job is automatically gets deleted after 60 seconds. Note that when a job is deleted, the pods associated with the job also gets deleted. And this is the template where we give the containers information just like we give it in the pod. Here we are using the mongo image and in this container we are running the mongo dump command. Mongo dump is a utility that creates the binary export of our database. And this is the connection string of our database. Test1 is the username and mongo password I am taking it from a secret. So mongo-0 is our first pod. Mongo is a headless service, default is the namespace and svc.cluster.local is the service DNS. Please refer to the services section of this series to understand more about services. And 27017 is the port number on which our MongoDB is running and this is the second pod name and this is our third pod name. And finally we are giving the path to which the exported dump should be saved in the container. To store this to volume. We are mounting this volume here. As you can see, we are using the Mongo dump persistent volume claim. You can refer to the volume section of this series to understand this better. So now let's try to apply this manifest and see if the database is getting exported or not. So let's go to the terminal kubectl apply f job.yaml. As you can see, the job is created. We can verify that with kubectl get jobs. And as you can see, one pod should be supposed to run and one is successfully completed. Let's verify the pods, kubectl get pods. As you can see, the pod is created by the job and this is completed. So now let us see whether the data is actually exported or not. So this data should be exported to the volume. So let's list on the volumes, kubectl get pv. This is the volume that is created. Let's describe this volume to know where the data is getting stored. kubectl describe pv pv name. As you can see, this is getting stored on the host path and it is getting stored in this location. So now let's get into our host, which is minikube, minikube ssh. Now we are in the minikube. Let's list down the path that we got from the pv ls this one. So as you can see, the folder is created as we given in the job manifest. So now let's try to list down the contents of the directory. As you can see, the admin database got exported. You can even get into this admin database. And as you can see, this post is the collection in the admin database. If you're doubtful, let's get into the Mongo pod and see if that collection exists. kubectl exec iphone it mongo iphone zero iphone iphone mongo. So we are in the Mongo pod. So now let's try to list on the databases. Show DBs. So this is the admin database. So let's get into the admin database. Use admin. And in this, let's try to list on the collections. As you can see, post collection is here. So now we took the backup of this admin database using jobs. So let's exit and list on the jobs again. kubectl get jobs. Ha! Are you thinking where is our job? The job is automatically got deleted because we have given the TTL seconds after finished. So when we give this, the job will be deleted automatically after given number of seconds. 
not only job the associate pod also gets deleted we can verify that with kubectl get pods as you can see the pod is also deleted you might be wondering we can also take this database backup with a simple pod right but we get multiple advantages by using jobs like retries parallelisms etc the homework for you is to try the parallelism active deadline seconds and completions please let me know in the comment sections if you face any issues with this now that we wrote the job that takes the database backup now let's write a simple cron job to take the database backups on a regular schedule instead of only once so for that let's create the cron job manifest cron job dot yaml again i'm pasting the manifest in the interest of time and as you can see this is the api version and kind and this is the name of the cron job and this is the cron expression which is the heart of the cron job so this cron expression is nothing but the time based schedule for running the recurring jobs we can use some online tools like crontab.guru to get the cron expression so here 5 stars means at every minute so if you want to run this cron job every day at midnight all you need to do is replace the first two stars with 0 and 0 that means this runs every day at midnight as we gave this cron expression this cron jobs runs at every minute and next property is the concurrency policy we already discussed that cron job creates the jobs on a scheduled basis so this concurrency policy refers to the number of concurrent job instances that are allowed to run at any given time by default a cron job will only create one job instance at a time meaning that if a job is still running when the next scheduled run time comes around the new job instance will be queued until the first one completes however we can set the concurrency policy field in a cron job to control how concurrent jobs are handled the available options are allow this allows the multiple job instances to run concurrently which can be very useful for handling overlapping tasks or if you want to run multiple instances of the same job in parallel and the next allowed value is the forbid which prevents any new job instances from starting while an existing one is still running and the next one is the replace which stops the currently running job and creates a new job and the default concurrency policy is forbid so let's give it as allow for now and next one is the successful jobs history limit this limit specifies how many completed jobs should be stored for our reference in the future so when we give it as two only two latest completed jobs will be there for our reference all other old jobs will be deleted automatically and same applies with the failed jobs and the next comes is the job template which is the template of the job because the cron job finally creates the job so this is similar to the job manifest that we have seen earlier so let's apply this cron job kubectl apply ifn f cron job dot yaml as you can see the cron job is created so let's list down kubectl get cj which is the short form of the cron job and this is our schedule and after one minute this will create the jobs so let's verify that with kubectl get jobs as you can see the job is created and that is completed too let's wait for one minute and see if the new job is also getting created so let's watch for the jobs so as you can see the new job is created let's close this and let's list down the jobs so this is the new job the old job is automatically deleted because we gave the ttl seconds after finish let's comment to this out and apply the cron job again so that we can see the history of the jobs so let's get the jobs so this is the second job that is created the first job is deleted because of the ttl seconds after finished so now let's wait for the third job to be created after one minute let's list down the jobs again as you can see there are two jobs so let's get into the mini cube and see if the data is getting export similar to what we did for the job ssh ls as you can see multiple folders are getting created because for every one minute the new job is getting created so let's exit and see how many jobs it got created as you can see the old job got deleted because we are maintaining the successful job limit as only 2 you can also suspend the cron job to stop creating the jobs temporarily to do that you have to edit the cron job kubectl edit cron job and cron job name or we can use the patch command kubectl patch cron job and cron job name so basically we are patching the cron job with in the spec we are giving suspend 
as true that's it enter sorry the boolean shouldn't be in the double quotes enter as you can see the cron job is patched now let's list on the cron jobs kubectl gets cj so the last schedule was before 25 seconds so now let's wait for another 35 seconds and see if the new job is getting created or not so let's list on the jobs kubectl get jobs so let's wait for some time so the last pod got created 54 seconds let's wait for some time and see if the new job is getting created because we suspended it the expectation is that the new job shouldn't be created see the last pod got created 74 seconds back but the new pod is not created it will not create the jobs anymore because we suspended it we can verify that one more time if you have a doubt as you can see it's been one or two seconds but still the job is not created we can get the last schedule with kubectl gets cj the last schedule was two minutes back but still the new pod is not created so now let's try to roll back the suspend patch so instead of true i'm just setting it as false and now the job should get created normally let's get the jobs kubectl get jobs as you can see the new job is created 17 seconds back so this is how we can suspend the cron job and finally you can delete the cron job with kubectl delete cron job and cron job name so now the cron job is deleted and when we delete the cron job the associated jobs also gets deleted as you can see there are no jobs in the default namespace that's it for this chapter i hope you thoroughly understood how jobs and cron jobs work in kubernetes my name is pavanil tapu and i thank you very much for watching this video if you liked it please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any updates